Hi, my name is Andy Roberts, the creator of Live Parts. Today I'm going to show you some new functionality in Release 1.4 of Live Parts. The first is something called a container gradient. If you want to start with an existing body or an existing shape that all of the cells of your part should grow within, you create a container gradient. Here I've created a container gradient representing the outside of this swing arm part. You just simply select the body and then specify the type as container. Next, I'm going to specify the attractor zones, which are these three regions in blue, the same way that I used to specify them. You select bodies that have not been merged with any other bodies, and you simply specify them as attractors. Next, however, instead of specifying forces or fixed status on these attractors, I'm going to use the new force surfaces and fixture feature. Um, the way this works is when you define a force, you can now select surfaces, the ones that you see selected or highlighted in blue here. In addition to that, you can specify the direction and magnitude of the force, as well as, as well as whether it's pushing or pulling on the surfaces. Here you can see I've specified a dynamic force that varies in time. So I'm essentially specifying that on the inside of these surfaces, the force should be impulsing up and down. Um, I also want to apply a force to the inside caps, um, which I can see if I rotate the part a little bit and highlight these, you can see that I've specified forces that are opposing on the insides of the swing arm pushing out. These are also dynamic forces that are oscillating back and forth. And finally, I've specified a fixture surface by picking the inside of the cylinder up here on the forward gradient. Um, this defines essentially all of the regions that I want filled in. It defines the container that's going to contain all of the cells. And it also defines the forces um, and the fixed surfaces. The last thing I'm going to do is specify the seed cells by specifying the front gradient and the two gradient, and the seed cell for the front gradient and the two gradient, and a symmetry plane down the center. When I go into live parts, <clears throat> I'm going to bring this part in. Now what you'll see is that the container gradients are represented in green. And I'm going to start this growing. And while it's growing, um, I'm going to point out a few of the features in here. Uh, if I turn off the containers, um, let me let this make its connection and start growing, and I'll show you these features. You'll see now a bunch of blue regions. These are the attractor zones on the left and the right. And if I turn those off, you can see the surfaces where the forces are defined. And so as these cells fill in these attractor gradients, any of the cells that are touching these surfaces are going to feel the forces. And in this case, I have forces oscillating to the left and to the right on these inside capping surfaces. And on the insides of the cylinders, I have oscillating forces up and down. And again, I have the container, which is defined around the entire part here. Um, and I have a fixture surface defined up here in the front. If I go ahead and turn off the cells, um, I'll turn that on and you'll be able to see the fixture. Um, you can see the fixture surface now in the front. So essentially what I've done is I've simplified the process of creating a live part. You create the attractor gradients, you can create repeller gradients if you want, or simply create a, create a container gradient. You define the fixture surfaces, you define the force surfaces, any symmetry planes and seed cells, and then you go off and you grow your part. Um, to show you what this part looks like in a more finished state, I have another session of live parts running here. And here you can see I've finished growing it and I've smoothed it. And what's more, when you export now, using the export STL, you export an STL file. But when you use the export LPE command, you, ex you export a combination of VREF geometry and mesh geometry. And when I go into SOLIDWORKS and apply my import command, you get a part that looks like this when you're done. And you can see on this part that there's a combination of VREF geometry. Let me turn off the, uh, the part that is serving as my cage. Uh, you can see here that the VREF geometry is seamlessly combined with the mesh geometry to, pro to pro provide a solid part. Um, I can go ahead and add features to this. I can do analysis on it. I can um, 
use mass properties, I can assign it to or assemble it into my assembly as a regular component using all of these nice VREP geometry surfaces for mating and aligning. So we've simplified the process of creating a live part and we've produced uh, a higher, more usable, higher quality piece of geometry that's output from live parts. I hope you'll all give this a try. Thanks.